Hi, I'm Simon Can. Welcome to Synthesizer Bootcamp. In this video, I'm going to look at FM synthesis, or frequency modulation synthesis to give it its full name. By the way, FM synthesis is a bit of a long topic, so I've broken this video into two parts. Even then, this is still only a brief introduction to FM synthesis. If you've seen video number four in this series, then you'll understand the principle behind FM synthesis. One wave modulates the pitch of another wave. We call the operator which is connected to the output the carrier. The carrier is also the modulation destination. We call the operator that does the modulating the modulator, which really isn't that surprising. The key difference between an LFO adding a bit of modulation to create a vibrato effect and FM synthesis is the frequency of the modulator. Conventionally, a low frequency oscillator is pitched below the threshold of human hearing. By comparison, the modulator in FM synthesis is pitched at a level that can be heard. Typically, it will be around the same pitch as the carrier or maybe one or two octaves higher or lower. The tone created by FM synthesis is then shaped by two factors. The first factor is the frequency of the modulator compared to the carrier wave it is modulating. As a crude rule of thumb, the higher the pitch of the modulator when compared to the pitch of the carrier, the brighter the tone will be. The second factor is the depth of the modulation, in other words, the extent to which the carrier is modulated. This depth is then often controlled over time with an envelope to give tonal shifts in a similar manner to how an envelope controlling a filter gives tonal shifts. OK, let's get on with this in a bit more detail and listen to some audio examples. FM synthesis gives a very recognisable sound, but all the sounds you hear in this video are created by sine waves. No filters are used to shape the sound and no FX units are used. You don't have to use sine waves in FM synthesis. You can use any wave you want, but sine waves are much more controllable and other waves have a tendency to degenerate into noise very quickly. If you take two sine waves with the modulator pitched at the same level as the carrier and set the output of the modulator to zero, then you will hear the carrier wave without modulation. In other words, you will hear a sine wave. If you set the modulator to output a very low signal, you will hear that the tone changes significantly. If you increase the level of the modulator, then you will hear a brighter sound. And so it carries on. As the modulator gets louder, the tone gets brighter. And remember, you're hearing the carrier which has been modulated by the modulator. You're not hearing the modulator in these examples. So far, the level of the modulator has been fixed throughout the note. This means that there is no tonal change. However, if a note sustains and the level of the modulator changes, then there will be a shift in the tone. Perhaps the best way to achieve a usable tone shift is to control the output level of the modulator with an envelope. If we take a simple envelope where the level increases to the maximum when the key is hit and then declines progressively over time and set that envelope to control the level of a modulator, you get a sound like this. What you are hearing here is the level of the modulator being controlled over time. The level of the carrier stays constant. By changing the level of the carrier, you can control the volume of the sound that is output. If we speed the envelope up, we then get a much less noticeable but far more musically useful sound. The other key tool for shaping the sound in FM synthesis is the pitch of the modulator, or more to the point, the pitch of the modulator when compared to the pitch of the carrier. In all of the examples we have listened to so far, the modulator and the carrier have been set to the same frequency. However, the pitch of the modulator and the carrier can be set wherever you want. Now clearly, when you can set the pitch of either operator without restriction, there are many permutations. 
certainly more permutations than I could demonstrate in this short video. Equally, many permutations give less than pleasing sonic results, so for this video I will demonstrate some of the more straightforward ratios which give sonically pleasing results, and I'll leave you to dig into the other permutations in your own time. For the audio examples you are going to hear, the pitch of the carrier is not changed. All I'm doing to affect the sound is changing the pitch of the modulator. The other factor affecting the sound is the level of the modulator. And for these examples, I'm controlling that level with an envelope that has a swift decay slope similar to the one I used in the previous example. Before we go any further, listen again to the sound when the modulator and carrier are both set to the same pitch. Now listen to the sound when we drop the pitch of the modulator by two octaves. This means that the carrier is set at four times the frequency of the modulator. As you can hear, this gives a much darker quality to the sound, and in the lower key ranges the modulator acts more like an LFO giving a vibrato effect. If we then raise the pitch of the modulator by one octave, it will be one octave below the carrier, or looked at another way, the carrier will be set at two times the frequency of the modulator. As you can hear, this gives something of a wooden quality to the sound. If we then raise the pitch of the modulator above the pitch of the carrier, and set it at seven semitones above the carrier, we get a ratio of three to two. In other words, the modulator is pitched at 150% of the frequency of the carrier. As you can hear, this gives a somewhat metallic quality to the sound. The sound is also fuller and deeper. If we push the pitch up again so that the modulator is set at 12 semitones above the carrier, we get a ratio of 2 to 1. In other words, the modulator is pitched at twice the frequency of the carrier. This gives a much cleaner sound which is closer to the tone of a square wave. By raising the pitch of the modulator again, this time setting it at 19 semitones above the carrier, we get a ratio of 3 to 1. In other words, the modulator is pitched at three times the frequency of the carrier. This introduces one classic FM sound you will have heard on many recordings, and at higher key ranges it gives a kind of bell-like sound. Now if you want another classic FM sound, the sound some might call cliched, then you want the 7 to 2 ratio. In other words, with the modulator set at 3.5 times the carrier's frequency. You can reach this by setting the pitch of the modulator at 21 semitones above the carrier. There are, of course, many other carrier to modulation ratios you can try, but the last one I want to demonstrate is the 6 to 1 ratio, where the modulator is pitched 31 semitones above the carrier. As you can hear, this also gives a bell-like sound, but in this case, the bell sound is much tighter. This is the end of the first part of this video. You can find out more about FM synthesis in the second part.